As I've mentioned many times on these videos, one of the top items on my to-do list is to put in a water feature. Now on this episode of the Rugged Homestead, we're going to be installing a koi pond. So the first thing we're going to have to do is clear out all these wood chips. So I've determined when it comes to wood chips, I just love moving them around. If you remember from when I put in the food forest floor and then dug it up to put in the swales and then had to move it all back, now I'm digging up the wood chips once again so I can dig the uh, holes for the uh, preformed pond liners and then I get to put them all back again. I love wood chips. the base of each of the uh, liners. This one here, this is the lowest part on the liner right there. And then these here, that around here, is where the plant tray, the plant shelf, is on the liner. Now this one is going to be the actual pond, the koi pond. Uh, it's basically got just one big deep uh, area to it so that'll be dug out here it has on that end the lip so this one is going to be sitting a little bit higher a couple of inches higher than that one so that the water will end up cascading over into uh, this pump into this pond and that's where the pump will be located and it'll recirculate the water around and into here I'm going to uh, end up building behind here a, a higher mound um, and then getting a uh, basically a flat shelf it's called I forget what, actually I forget what it's called um, that the water for the waterfall so the water will end up cascading from there uh, from the liner into that pond and then into that pond having air aerating the water like that will help prevent the uh, algae and uh, bugs and things like that to uh, form in the uh, in the water and it'll also make it look uh, a little bit nicer but I'll have to pick up uh, that uh, shelf and uh, to create that uh, waterfall um, but that's going to be added afterwards because I dig out all this dirt here keep it to the side and I'm going to end up building behind here where the uh, waterfall will actually uh, be installed. So the first step is going to be digging out these holes. This hole and this hole are going to be pretty close in depth. This one's going to be a little bit higher, a couple of inches higher, and then this one will be higher still. So time to get to it. I go about 14 15 inches into the ground so I got a little bit more to dig there because you want that lip along the bottom to uh, sit about an inch or two above the ground so that actually that lip that you see there the edge of that lip that we want to sit right on the ground there and that'll give it the uh, necessary height uh, that you'd want uh, for it so a little bit more digging <laughs> So 
So we've dug the hole out to about 16 inches deep, and that's so I can lay a layer of sand underneath there to support the liner. So what I'm gonna do now is get a tamper just to flatten the bottom out a little bit and then, uh, and then use the uh, uh, sand to level out the bottom. So I've set the liner in the hole and my hole's a little off, but I've uh, leveled it out side to side and also this way. Now it just sits almost right on top of the bottom of the hole down there and on that shelf right there. This one's actually an inch or two above the, uh, the shelf that I cut out on that side, but that's fine because I'm gonna end up putting about an inch of sand on the bottom underneath the liner and along the shelf as well. And that way it'll have support all the way around and then I'll fill in, fortunately with this larger hole on the side here, uh, I'll be able to fill in on the uh, underneath and around so that it'll be uh, completely stable. And then the next thing I'll do is dig out the other uh, liner's hole. That's only going to sit about halfway uh, down in the hole. That way the waterfall will create some nice splashing here and I picked up some cinder blocks today that I'll be using to create a waterfall behind the uh, this uh, basin here so this will be serve as filler it'll help build up the ground so I won't need so much uh, fill around it and then of course I've got my pile of rocks that will end up going around the edging and serve as a uh, an edging all the way around and uh, a landscaping feature. Okay, the second hole has been dug. And as you can tell, it's not as deep as the first one. It only goes about halfway on this uh, liner. So I'll put it in here. Like that. So, although it looks like that lip doesn't reach over, it's actually just an optical illusion. It's hanging over the uh, lower one. And this is gonna be the start of a hill that comes up this way to a waterfall which isn't going to be too much higher behind it but it will slope back and on either side to show you here you can see how the lip hangs over the top of the uh, the lower pond my filter will sit at the bottom here and i'll run it up underneath the uh, uh, this uh, upper pond and along the edge and then up to the uh, waterfall that's going to be back there. So as you can see behind me, I've got a load of uh, landscape stone that I was able to pick up for free from Craigslist. A couple large boulders, a bunch of smaller uh, river rock type stones. So I'll be able to use them in the landscaping. And since my waterfall area isn't going to be so large, I think these will be proportional to the, uh, to the size of the waterfall. This uh, is just the start, but first thing I have to do is actually start leveling the uh, liners with this sand. First thing to do will be to take out the liners and then lay in about an inch or so of uh, sand on the bottom for the liners to sit on. Looks like we had a little bit of the uh, edging give way. Probably the dog stood too close on the edge. So just clean that up first. And now down here, we'll put the sand and then uh, we'll lay the liner in. Actually put sand on the shelf as well.
You really can't do a good job unless you have a dog standing right on top of you. All right, that's pretty good on the bottom. And now I'll throw some on the uh, ledges as well. Excuse me. So by doing that, by pushing it down, I can see where the bottom of this is touching. So all over here is nothing on the, uh, um, here, on the bottom of the liner. So I'm gonna take some fill that I've dug out and I'm gonna throw it back in here. So what I'll do now is I'll start filling in sand all around. Now to make sure all the sand goes into all the open air spaces underneath here, I'm gonna take a hose and run some water and that should force the sand down underneath and then the water will end up displacing itself. So what I did was I added water to the pond, which I can drain out afterwards, pump it out afterwards, um, just so that it held uh, firm and didn't shift with the water underneath, like lifting it up uh, as I was uh, shooting the sand underneath. Everything's level, side to side, front to back. <laughs> no digging, could have used your help before. Uh, so it's all level. And what I'm going to do now is now fill in continue filling in with sand all around and then afterwards I'll add some more fill dirt fill behind it underneath here I got the sand now uh, going down looks like it can still use it looks like it can still use a little bit right over here I just got to check all around underneath and make sure all the sand is going in. But by doing it that way, using the water, it makes sure it flows to all the uh, spots underneath the, uh, the liner. All the sand has settled. It took a full four bags to fill in all the nooks and crannies. It's basically level underneath the pond. And this gap here, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, fill that, this area in with uh, the dirt. 
up to about here or so. But before I do that, I'm gonna do this pond here, but I need to go get some more bags of sand. Just testing out the new pump. It's a 620 gallon per hour pump from Harbor Freight Tools. And uh, it seems to be moving that water just fine. This is about a 300 and 400 gallon uh, pond. I figured out that that one's about 200 gallons. So this is probably 100, 150. So probably about 350. And that means the water will circulate through here uh, about twice an hour, thereabouts. So I got this spillway from Lowe's. They cost a ridiculous amount of money, like $25, and that's like the cheapest one you can find. They up run upwards of $100 more. I was going to try and make my own, but uh, I like the fact that it's got a shelf that sticks out. And that way I can put rocks underneath there and give it a more natural look as well as hide it with rocks on top. And it's got a deep reservoir there. So I'll end up putting some uh, media in there to make it a biological filter as well. And hopefully that'll help it uh, keep the water uh, clean. So all together, since uh, I have I had these two uh, free. The only thing that's cost me is the spillway, as I said, $25. 20 foot of three quarter inch hose, which is $18 at Lowe's. And then the Harbor Freight Tools uh, pump, which lists for 40 bucks, but with uh, their ever present coupons, got it for about $30. So all together, 55 almost uh, $70, $75, about $75 for the total, not bad for a pond, and now I'll just start landscaping the sides here and uh, making it look uh, pretty. So I've started filling in the soil, backfilling around the uh, liners. I've got it all along the edge, even with the bottom edge of that uh, front liner. Up here it's sloping up and I'll end up hiding all this. <laughs> Okay, we have the base around the uh, liners installed, and that'll give me a foundation on which to start putting the uh, rocks. Now in the back by the uh, spillway and the filter, I'll end up adding to that afterwards. First I want to get my uh, rocks in place, and then I can bound it up back there to create more of the uh, waterfall effect. Once the rocks are in place, I'll be putting in some uh, dirt in various uh, nooks and crannies where I'll be able to put plants and they'll be able to uh, overhang the rocks and go into the pond as well. Uh, but then these uh, wood chips that I bounded up when I dug out this uh, uh, pool, I'll uh, be covering them back up to like the edge of the rocks and there'll be rocks slowly disappearing into the uh, uh, wood chips right now. I have to go uh, get my rocks that I uh, picked up, clean them off, and see about positioning them in place. Okay, we're progressing here. Got a lot of the uh, stone in, that whole side's done. This is uh, uh, completed. It's just um, big flagstones that I have, and that way you can walk right up to the uh, water. The uh, wood chips will be pulled up 
alongside of it to uh, soften the edges. And then I just got to put in a bunch more stone like I have on this side. So it looks like a, a big jumble of rocks. But uh, soon we'll be pulling in the wood chips into it. So that's going to again soften the edges. It's going to shrink down the, uh, the width of the uh, stone because some of these stones will be uh, buried into the uh, wood chips. And of course then I still have to interplant it uh, with various plants. I'm not sure whoever it was that said this is like a couple hours to a couple of days project, but about a week later, we're done. Well, for the most part, we're done. We still have to wait for the water to clear to put the fish and the plants in, and we have to landscape the outside of it. But the hardscaping is done. And I, for one, am quite happy to be done humping all these rocks around. What a pain in the ass. <laughs> and I think it came out okay. I think it looks all right. It wouldn't have been so cloudy had I not, uh, had I forgotten to wash off the stone before I put it in. So that's what actually clouded the water up. Had I uh, washed the stone off, it would be much less cloudy right now. Uh, you can barely make out the outline of it, but I have a half a cinder block in there, and that'll give the fish a place to go uh, for some protection, if uh, necessary, and or shade. And just have stone along the edge here, and on the bottom here and here. Gotta find a way to hide that hose yet. See how I'm going to do that. But all in all, I'm happy with it. I think it's uh, it's okay. Not perfect, but okay. But I got some uh, more irises. Uh, the gentleman that had given me uh, these irises here and those that I planted out there, uh, he actually gave me another dozen irises. So they'll end up getting planted around. And as I said, I also ordered uh, some 40 strawberry plants. So I'm gonna tuck them in along here as well and on the opposite side. I won't use them all up here, but uh, I'll end up planting them throughout the, uh, the landscape. So this was about a, a week plus project it took. I mean, part of that was because it rained so much. I uh, wasn't able to work on it all the time. And these rocks are pretty damn heavy. <laughs> First, I'd have to go pick them up at the place I got them from and then uh, uh, bring them back here and then carry them back. Well, with a wheelbarrow, of course. But I think it'll uh, provide a nice little uh, uh, water feature for the back. So I'll be able to sit in the shade, be like some Roman emperor and just pull grapes uh, down. Uh, a few concubines uh, waving palm fronds over me would be nice too. I'll have to see how Mrs. Rugged Homestead feels about that. Uh, but all in all, I think this will be uh, this will be fine. And as I said, it's a nice feature, and maybe it'll uh, it'll provide a wildlife habitat for uh, some animals. Maybe some frogs will be attracted to it. Birds will maybe come and will come get a drink. Bees. All right. If you like what you see, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd already do so, and ring that alarm bell and that we'll be notified right away when videos like this are posted. And check us out on Facebook, where I regularly update on how I'm going about turning my suburban home into a homestead. Okay, thanks for watching.